Woodland mansions have been upgraded in Minecraft 1.19, becoming a great place to get tons of alleys and still featuring lots of loot. So in this video, I'll show you how to find and raid them. Now, woodland mansions were added in Minecraft 1.11 and were extremely rare, but they were the only source of the new Totems of Undying, making them definitely a structure that most players would try in raids so that they could have a second life at some points. 1.14's raids gave you an easy and renewable source to Totems Totems of Undying, the only main loot item in the Woodland Mansion, making them be a structure that was very rare and hard to get, and also not with much of a point to exploring. However, in Minecraft 1.18, Woodland Mansions were made over 10 times more common, and as well as that, they were made an easier structure to raid because of the light level change that mobs would spawn at. Most of the Woodland Mansion was then already spawn proofed by the torches in it, and now in 1.19, their value has been increased a lot by making them the best source of alleys in the entire game. There is no better time to raid a woodland mansion than right now, and I'll show you how to do it. So the first step is, of course, finding a woodland mansion. Now, Minecraft does provide you a method of doing this. If you buy a woodland explorer map from a cartographer that has been upgraded quite a bit, then with this map, if you look at it, it will lead you to the woodland mansion. So basically, the top of the map aligns with north, so if we're facing north and we go towards that direction, north is also when your z-axis is going down, so getting lower. And so if we travel north here on the map, we can eventually go to that woodland mansion. And more or less the top, right, left, and bottom of the map will coordinate to the north, south, east, and west. And you'll know you're getting close when the map starts to fill in, just like it is now. And the closer you get to it, the more will be filled in around where the mansion is. And now that we're on the map there, we can actually see right in front of us, there is the woodland mansion that this map has been bringing us towards. So that's one method of finding woodland mansions, which definitely works. But if you don't want to bother with cartographer villagers, or you want to see multiple woodland mansions locations, what you can do is you can use chunk base and put your seed in on there, and then go to the woodland mansion finder or to the general seed finder, put in your seed, and then you can find a woodland mansion through that as well. And of course that works for Bedrock and Java Edition. But the other thing too is that because woodland mansions are so much more common in 1.19, again being over 10 times more common, it is pretty easy just to explore around and find one of these, at least much easier than it used to be. And so if you find a large dark forest on one of your worlds with all the dark oak trees in it, it is very likely that you could find a woodland mansion inside of it if it's big enough. And now that we've found this woodland mansion, here is some more info on how it generates, what's inside of it, and also the treasure that you can get. So this structure always generates generates in with three floors. There is the base floor, which has no windows, and then there is the floor above it, which is about the same size, and there are windows on it. And on the third floor, it is smaller than the second floor. There are windows on it, but you can kind of see here, it's always quite a bit smaller than the second floor. What's also interesting is that the third floor can actually be incredibly small. In fact, basically only one room in it. An example of that is right here, and it is interesting to see how small that is, and also how there's basically just a corridor and like one room. And I've even seen ones where there's literally a teeny little square in the corner. But generally you do get one that's very large like this. And as you go up the Woodland Mansion, it gets more difficult with each floor. So the first floor is the least difficult, then the second floor is more difficult, and the third floor is for sure the most difficult. Just because more dangerous illagers will generate in the further up you go. Also beneath the Woodland Mansion is a massive cobblestone base that it goes on top of. This will extend all the way down till it hits solid blocks like right here, but it will go through water. And these can be very large, for instance in this case here. This is solid, goes through the entire thing here. Now woodland mansions are not like a desert temple, let's say, or a jungle temple, where every single one will generate the exact same way. In fact, every woodland mansion is unique, and there are over 50 different rooms that can generate in the woodland mansion. And so every single woodland mansion also has different amounts of resources, and a slightly different level of difficulty, and certainly a different layout. However, the general rule does apply that more dangerous floors and more interesting floors are there the higher you get up, with things like the prison floors that contain the alleys generally being on the first floor. And also, not all rooms are very easily visible. There's oftentimes secret rooms in a woodland mansion mansion that you can find between walls, but I will go more into finding those secret rooms later. And there's some other interesting secrets about the woodland mansions. For instance, the fact that the vindicators that sometimes generate in the halls here, as well as the evokers like this one that can generate in different rooms, 
will very rarely in Java Edition have one of those pillager war banners on top of them, the exact same ones they have when they're on a raid. And so if you're ever raiding a woodland mansion and find one of those, it's sort of a unique easter egg that's hinting to the fact that raids definitely come from woodland mansions. So what is the treasure that you can find at a woodland mansion? There's never any treasure in chests that generate out in the open. All the treasure is in secret chests, so for instance in the storage rooms here, every single chest is always empty. You can look through them if you want, but in every single scenario, there will never be any treasure in any of the chests in the storage rooms that can generate in. Now certain structures will sometimes generate with a chest that'll have a tool or two in it, or maybe some saplings, but for actual treasure it's always concealed in some way. For instance in this room here, if we go behind this cobblestone, there's sort of like a secret chest here. This one has a golden apple, more or less. It has the same loot as, let's say, a dungeon chest would. So nothing crazy, but there is the chance for an enchanted golden apple and some other treasures that you wouldn't necessarily find in a dungeon. And there are all kinds of rooms that have secret chests in them. But overall, there's no chest that would, let's say, be like hidden between two blocks or anything. They're always somewhat easy to get to. For instance, here is an example of a chest that just has saplings in it, with there being no actual loot here that will ever generate. Now the other type of loot here is loot from the illagers, so the vindicators will sometimes drop emeralds. And the evokers, which are sort of the whole point of the woodland mansion initially, will drop the totem of undying every time they're killed. And of course, this item grants you the ability to live if you're killed, once. So it'll basically revive you if you get very hurt. So here's an example of us dropping from a distance that's deadly. And when we get the ground here, the Totem of Undying will activate, making us not die. And of course, with Hardcore, this is an incredibly useful thing to have. That definitely saves a lot of lives there. Now, another source of loot here, in a sense, is the Allays that spawn in the dungeons here. Every single dungeon in these dungeon rooms can spawn in one to three Allays. So for instance, this room has two. That room had one. This room here looks like it has two, and this room here might have two or three or one. This one has three, it looks like. And so in one of these rooms, you could get anything from four to 12 allays, definitely making it a very good source of that mob. And I have a video all about allays. If you want to know more about them, I have an eye card on the screen right now. If you click on that, it will send you to a video where you can learn more about this new blue mob. And the final source of treasure here, which certainly does not generate in every mansion, is that sometimes in the generation here you can have diamond blocks that spawn in. So there's two ways this can happen. Either it can generate with an obsidian tree, so there'll be an obsidian tree with a diamond block inside of it, or there'll be a large cage with lava inside of it, and inside of that lava will be a diamond block. And of course, if you find these, that's a pretty cool treasure to have, especially since it came from the Woodland Mansion. And the Woodland Mansion is filled with really fun things, like for instance, this cat pixel art right here, and also things like the Illager pixel arts. So now that you know all the information you'll need about Woodland Mansions, what do you need to bring to raid them? Well, what you want is the best armor you can find, as well as a sword, an axe, and a pickaxe if you can get it. You also want to bring a bed, some chests, a bow and arrow, some torches, a shield, the best food source you can get, some planks, as well as a water bucket. And I will show you what to use these for as we raid it. So here's how you raid it. The first thing you want to do is get rid of any pillagers near the entrance. If you lure them into water, they're a lot less dangerous that way. And you want to start by putting a couple torches behind the main stairway here. And right behind this, make yourself a small temporary base with some chests and also a bed. And make sure to set your spawn point here, unless of course you're in hardcore. And this will make it so that if you die, you can come back here. Now the first thing you want to do as you go through here is to spawn proof them. The good news is, is that unless the light level is zero, you're not going to get any mobs in here. However, what is also important to note is that in the hallways here, it actually will never generate in with an area that is at light level zero. So even the corner there is not at light level zero, but it is pretty low. Also, you do find a lot of the Vindicators in here, and they're incredibly dangerous, in some sense more dangerous than the Evokers themselves, as their axe attack is so deadly. I'd also suggest temporarily going up the stairs here and putting a couple torches to make sure it's all lit up. Then to go either right or left and deal with every single room as you find it, either putting a torch in it or getting the loot from it. So for instance over here, we'll go into this room that has the giant pillager, take a look around it, put down some torches so we don't have any mobs that spawn in here later. And once that's done, we'll just leave the room and continue on our way. Down the hall here, we come to a second room. We'll put in more torches just to make sure it's spawn proofed. If you do run into some creepers or some other mobs, here's sort of where the water bucket comes in handy. 
As of course, explosions in water will not destroy any blocks. And I probably should have used my shield there. With a shield and a water bucket, you can more or less destroy creepers without damaging the mansion, and also without getting hurt. Just of course be aware about the carpets getting destroyed by that. And we just found a prison room here that does not contain alleys, because it's the wrong type for them. But if you do find a prison room with alleys in it, you do not want to grab them at this stage. And we'll light up the chest room here, just again being aware that there's no treasure that's ever in here. It's just a bunch of chests with nothing in them. Also because the Vindicator can disable your axe if you hold it up, something you can always try is to try and defeat it with an axe yourself as although the attack speed isn't as high it is a weapon that can inflict a lot of high damage to your opponent and now that we've spawn proofed both sides of the bottom floor of this mansion we'll now go up to the second layer and start with that but be aware there are a lot of these vindicators that can come right away as the second floor is much more dangerous than the first floor something i would definitely suggest doing is getting out your bow and using those to kill the vindicators since they're only really dangerous at a close range because of their incredibly deadly axe attack but of course at close range you would probably want to use a axe on them and we'll kill that vindicator as well something good to note as well is that although a lot of rooms on the second floor here may look kind of bright you still want to put torches in them as there's a lot of windows here if it's daytime while you're raiding this which it probably would be it'll look like it's spawn proofed when it actually isn't as when it's night it would get very dark there sometimes there's actually library rooms which are also sort of a form of treasure that can generate here as there's an absolutely massive amount of books for instance here there's three bookcases which are double thick providing with an amazing source of bookshelves also, none of the wool statues contain any blocks inside of them other than wool, except for one, which is a large pillager statue, like the ones we saw on the first floor there. At the center of this statue only, if we go to the middle of it, there'll be something special, which is the fact that at the very center of this, there will be a single lapis block, sort of like where the pillager's brain would be. So that is something good to look out for, is this lapis block inside the pillager, but none of the other wool statues have anything like that. And that's also sort of a little small treasure you can find here. Now this is the boxing ring room, and this one does have a secret chest in it. So basically on the second floor of the boxing ring structure here, where there's sort of like the observation deck down there, and it's actually kind of funny because in this case we had some mobs that are actually fighting each other in there, which doesn't usually happen, but because they were shooting at me, that did, so that's kind of cool. But anyway, up here is a chest, and this will have loot that is very similar to loot that you would find in a dungeon chest with, you know, some different mob drops. Here we have some chain armor, as well as a no durability gone diamond hoe a bucket, some bread, and some wheat, and just some little odds and ends here. This is very rare, but there were no evokers on any place of this second floor. Usually you'll find several rooms with them here, and I would see generally the average woodland mansion has anywhere from three to six totems of undying at it, which of course would mean three to six of the evokers. Basically what you'll find on the second floor is the entrance to a small staircase going to the third floor. Something to be aware of is that there is this dark area behind the staircase, which is very dangerous and often filled up with a large amount of hostile mobs. For instance, here there's a lot. In fact, for whatever reason, it looks like a if indicator made their way into here, making this a real death trap. They certainly do not spawn in here. It must have wandered there naturally, as of course they do not spawn in there. The trick with these, though, if you find them, is to run up to them as fast as you can, and to kill them at close range, not getting far away, and just to do that as fast as you can. Now once they summon in a lot of their vexes, which are these small sort of wispy-like creatures that will run at you at a sword and try and kill you, then that can be quite deadly as their attack is pretty strong. A shield though is a great defense against these guys, as it does block their attacks quite well. Although of course you can be slain by a vex like I just was, and that is exactly why we have our bed here. Also once a vex has been summoned in, it will die rather quickly. So it'll actually start to die naturally as that one did just there. So it's often good not to try and attack them unless there's a large number of them. Now in this woodland mansion there appears to be an extremely small third floor. You can see there's just one room over here and one room there. And also on this room right here which has this little closet here. You think there would maybe be a treasure behind here or in here. But where there is a treasure is up here. It looks like there should be a ladder there but there isn't. And so if you grab some building blocks like the ones that I said you should bring. 
Then you can go up like this and grab the loot chest that is next to the bed, which has the same type of loot as we found in other chests. Also, something I would suggest is not really grabbing any of the loot out of the chests until you fully spawn proof the entire thing, as when you die like I did earlier, your items wouldn't go as many places and there'd be less of a chance of potentially losing them. Now once you have fully spawn proof the entire mansion, we go to the next stage of raiding it, which is basically getting all the loot out of the chests that you found but did not grab out of them, and also rescue the LAs. So if you find an LA prison and let them out, they'll basically start to explore around the mansion, or they may exit out the front door. All you have to do to grab them and let them escape successfully with you is to simply right click on each alley with a block, then they will follow you. It doesn't really matter what the blocks are, as they don't really care about the player unless you've given them an item. Also, once you've grabbed the large amount of loot from the Woodland Mansion, I would suggest going back down to the first floor and putting it in some of your chests here. So your inventory will be more full and you don't have to worry about losing as many things if you do end up dying later on. So once we've grabbed the LAs, got all the loot into our chest, there's only one step left which is to look for secret rooms. And there's many ways of doing this. The first one you can do is to simply go outside the mansion a little bit and sort of walk around it looking inside of each window. Now the reason you would do this is because oftentimes there'll be a secret room which does have a window in it, but there is not an easy way to see that room from inside the mansion or really a way at all. However, through the windows here, you can sort of see if there's an area you have not lit up yet. And also on the second floor here is a great place to find a hidden room. And right here there's actually a hidden room, so these windows have some blocks on them. And if we break the windows here, or just break the planks around them, you can see this is sort of boarded up, it's just an empty room. However, if you find a room like this, definitely explore further, because this will often have a loot chest in it, in fact always. So if we basically break the roof on this exact structure, there will be loot in there. But anyway, in this little attic, there is some really good treasure of the normal Woodland Mansion type chest. And you can even find enchanted golden apples in here. Like I just found there, I actually did not plant that there, that's amazing. So yeah, you can definitely find some really good loot here. And of course, Enchanted Golden Apples are an amazing item to get. A very good source of them is also here at the Woodland Mansion. And so definitely looking for secret rooms is a good idea. Another good trick to look for secret rooms is to basically go through the parts of the Woodland Mansion that you know of, and occasionally break a block here or there, seeing, hmm, is there an area I have not gone in yet? And another thing you can find here which is incredibly good, is sometimes you'll find a hidden spider spawner, which can make it one of the highest up spider spawners you can find, even making this an amazing place to turn into your base. And that's sort of the final part of this, which is once you've fully spawn proofed it, fully gotten all the treasure out of it, and put out your little micro base under the stairs here, you can now do with this whatever you want. Some players will burn it down, although I would not suggest that, as it's such an amazing and large structure. If this is anywhere near your base or the spawn point of the world, this could be a great thing to turn into a base or maybe renovate it into a base, or even just have it as a side sort of outpost on your way to a certain area. I would definitely suggest converting this into something, as it's just such a massive structure, certainly the largest single building structure in the game. And also because it's fully spawn proofed, it would be also safe from that point on. So that's how you raid a woodland mansion in 1.19. Hope you enjoy and good luck not getting killed by the Vindicators.